So now what we want to think about is what's the interpretation of this thing that we've just stated? We haven't really created it at all. What's its interpretation? We have this time-dependent function, which we will think of as, as an external forcing to the mass spring system, which gives a finite amount of energy in an instantaneous, instantaneous moment in time. So how should we think about this delta function? Okay. Well, in this video, we're, or in this section, we're going to talk about the meaning of the Dirac distribution. Okay. Let's revisit our notation. The Dirac distribution, I will typically use this first meaning or this first symbol right here to have delta subscript t naught of t, and that's going to be the same as delta of t minus t naught, where we think of all t naughts doing is horizontally shifting in time the location of that impulse, that spike. And we must realize that this makes sense only through integrals, right? It's not really a function otherwise. So additionally, we must introduce a function known as the heavy side step or unit step function. That function is going to be theta. Theta could be given some sort of time, t naught. And what theta will do, another notation too, is u for unit step. And again, that's given some time, t naught. And what we have to recognize here is that t naught plays this very important role. For all t that are less than t naught, the function is just going to output a zero. For all t that are greater than or equal to t naught, the function will output a one. And so what we have is a function that goes nothing, 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 up until some point in time where it becomes something and it stays that something, in this case, the number one, for the rest of time. So it's a primitive jump discontinuity. And we think about it as a step, a step from zero to one, or like a switching mechanism. This section would represent the time period in which the function is off. And after t naught, this section right here where the function is one, we can think about it as the function being on. Okay. So using this function, I can create more elaborate piecewise functions, right? So here is a function f of t. The function is going to be zero outside of the following times. For the first time from zero to one second, the function is linearly increasing. Then for the second moment time from one to two seconds, the function is constant. And then for the third moment time, this is linear from two to three seconds, decreasing. And then the rest of the time, the function is zero. So how is this going to work? Well, I need my function. So I have this f of t right here, right? Which is my graphical function. Here I have f of t, or sorry, f of t here, which is my symbolic piecewise definition of the function here. f of t is my graphical version. And now let's think about how we can represent it in terms of unit step functions. Well, at time zero, the function becomes the function y equal t or f equal t. And it needs to stay that up until this key moment in time one second where that function that is linearly increasing must turn off. So what I do is I introduce a turn off by bringing a negative into this mix. And so at time one second, this function for t greater than or equal to one second, this u one of t becomes the number one. And what is the number one multiply? It multiplies this t. So for all t that are less than one second, this unit step function, this first in this um, list is zero. And then at one second, it becomes the function one. And then I get a t minus t, which is equal to zero for all t greater than or equal to one. Now, after that's done, I need the function to be constant. So at one second, I additionally turn on the function 1. And then at 2 seconds, this function is not going to live forever either. It's only going to live for the second between 1 and 2 seconds. Then at 2 seconds, we turn the number 1 off. So this will cause a constant function for t between 1 and 2. And then the last time interval is going to switch on at 2 seconds, right? It's not going to, or and what is it going to switch on at 2 seconds? It needs to be this linearly decreasing function. And so at two seconds, after this green constant function is shut down by the subtraction of these two step functions, u1 minus u2, we're going to turn on the function 3 minus t, and then that is going to give me this linearly decreasing function, but I don't want this linearly decreasing function for all time. And so at three seconds, we turn it off. And what are we turning off? We're turning off the exact same thing that we turned on, right? This 3 minus t. And so this is the step function representation of this piecewise definition or this graphical definition. So all three functions, or all three representations, piecewise, graphical, f of t with steps are equivalent. Okay, so that is the notion of a unit step function, a function that is a primitive for piecewise definitions, and we're going to use that now and draw a relationship with delta. So we have that the step function acts